Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will focus on conservation score. In the previous class, we discussed about the multiple sequence alignment, right. If you align different sequences, right, we will get an alignment and how to utilize this alignment to extract different features. How far we see that a particular SDU is highly conserved, right, in any, any positions, right. So, what did we discuss in the last class? We discuss a blast. What is a blast? Basic, Basic local alignment. Search tool. Search tool right. So what is a, uh, the software is called blast. Right. You can. Uh, what are the various features of blast? What are the applications of blast? Uh, either through database we can align or uh, two sequence we can. Align. Yeah, if you have a query sequence, okay. you can identify the sequences which are similar to your query sequence. If you have two sequences, you can see the identity or similarity between the sequences. Then you can use blast to identify any specific motifs or any specific patterns, right, inherently present in any sequence or any functionally important motifs, right. So, they can use either DNA sequence or the protein sequence, right, for any sequence alignment. Then, how to evaluate whether two sequences are similar or not? What are the various scores available to evaluate the, the alignment? Alignment, alignment is score. Alignment score depending upon the total can, can do with the different aspects, right? One is you can with the matching pairs, right? So then the second one you can do with the similarity, then we can do with the identity, then the query coverage, then p value or the e value, right? You can see probability of having that alignment with the specific threshold score, right? Or the what the expected value. Then we discussed about the multiple sequence alignment, right. How many sequences are required for multiple sequence alignment? More than two. More than two, minimum you need three, right. Three or more sequences if you have, right. What are the principle used in multiple sequence alignment? How they do the alignment? One by one. Uh, right, they have the pairwise alignment, then see the similar sequences put together, right. And then they can align these disintegrated sequences, finally they make the complete alignment, right. What is the program which can get give the multiple sequence alignment? Cluster. Cluster. Also we discussed few more. Uh, software, software. What are the other, other online resources? Map, Mapped, Muscle, Muscle. Muscle. Promos, right? This can do that. Then we discuss about side blast. What is side blast? Position, position specific. specific, right? Related the blast. So here you can make the position specific scoring matrices for your sequence, right? By aligning with the different other sequences, right? They can use different iterations, right? With any threshold value. So finally, you can get the scoring matrix. They can also call as profiles. So now, if you have a multiple sequence alignment. Then what are the applications? What can we infer from multiple sequence alignment? There are several applications, right? So today we will discuss about conservation. So what do you think about conservation? Right? If you think about conservation, see if you have set of sequences, some positions are occupied by same residue or similar residues, right? In this case, you can say that position right maintains a particular amino acid residue, right, either in protein sequences or nucleic acid sequences. So, and this sequence also depends upon the evolutionary rate, right, how frequent a residue is mutated to different residues. Likewise, when we discussed about the PAM matrix, we have the alignment, several residues are the same and some residues change, right, the evolution. So, likewise, the score also depends on how far a specific residue is mutated, right, in the homologous sequences. So, whether this rate of evolution is same or different, that depends upon the amino acid changes, right. Some cases it remains the same. In the PAM matrix also we discussed about the different amino acids, right. For example, cysteine or tryptophan, so we get the high score, right. And some positions which evolve slowly to the different residues. Some cases they maintain to be constant 
and some positions they change from organism to organism. So, the positions which are the same right these are called the conserved. So, the ones which evolve rapidly that changes in different organisms they are called variable. So, if you have multiple sequence alignment you can look at the three positions in some positions you can see that is the residues they maintain at the same location they are called conserved and some cases different organism they change the residues they are called variable. Then how to get the conservation score like for example, if you have an amino acid sequence you like to know which residues are conserved and which residues are variable how to do that first we have to get the sequences right for the query sequence you will get the similar homologous sequences where shall we get the homologous sequences blast so you can go to blast and you get the homologous sequences and you get the sequences right and do the multiple sequence alignment and then you can the score so you have to compare the sequence of similar proteins right deposited in the uniprot or swissprot database and which are homologous to this your, your, your own sequence right then you can compare the sequences and you will see where you have the variable residues and where you have the conserved residues. So, now if you give multiple sequence alignment for example, if you see position number 60. So, if you look at the position number 60, so this position is conserved or variable in the conserved because if you see the 10 different sequences ok this is the uniprot id ok, okay this is the sequence. Okay, just for example, I kept from 1 to 60. We take the 60th position, you can see all the residues, right? These positions, right, are accommodated with the residue glycine. If you look at to this position, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, this position is variable or conserved? It is variable, and we can also see conserved. Okay, if you see this position, so what are the preference of amino acid residues at this position? T A G S right T A G S, but we look into the all the 10 sequences most of them have the residue 3 on it. Now, if you have this alignment how to give numbers how to get score. So, which one is highly conserved which one is highly variable right because some cases you get, if you say the position number 6 here also you see the position is accommodated with the alanine D, D, D E. So, here also 3 residues, here also 4 residues, right? Which one is variable, which one is conserved, how far the difference between these two positions. So, we need to give a score. If you numerically get some numbers, then you can compare. Okay, this position A is more conserved than position number B. So, how to do that? This involves two different steps. First step we need to get the amino acid frequencies each position how far each amino acid residue prefers at a particular position and then the second part we convert these frequencies into scores. So, there are various ways to get the frequencies as well as to get the score. If you see the frequencies ok listed of three different ways to get the frequencies one is unweighted amino acid frequencies here we do not give any weightage all amino acids are treated samely, all sequences are treated samely. So, we do not give any weightage to any sequence or any positions or any amino acids. And the second one we give weightage to some amino acids or to some sequences. For example, if you have a particular sequence right we know that we need to maintain the residue positions then we can give some preferences right we have to maintain that particular sequence. Likewise, like some positions, for example, some cysteine is very highly conserved. We know that this forms that is a bridge. So, if you want to keep that, we will give weightage to that particular residue, right. So, if it is cysteine, then we give more weightage, otherwise, you give less weightage. You can do that. Then, third one, you can compare with the random choice. You have your aligned sequences, then if you shuffle randomly, you will get the sequences and how far it will match your aligned sequences as well as the random sequences, right. Then, in this case, you can say, ok this is a line sequence which are uh, really significant and you can calculate the frequency of that particular position. So, if you get this preference then we can convert this into score because we need numerical values right. So, either we can use entropy based method right considering the probability of residue at a particular position take the probability multiplied with logarithmic of probability you can get the score 
and the second one you can do the variance based measure that how far this very uh, this decision positions vary with different positions for example alanine at position number 3 how this differs from, from alanine in position number 10 that how many alanines in position number 3 how many alanines in position number 10 and totally how many alanines a sequence compare with all these uh, positions and the residues we can measure a score then you can also use sum of pair score for example if you sequence a and you can the second sequence b so you have two different amino acids so you can use see matrix to see how far they are consistent how far they are uh, aligned right which matrix usually we use pi matrix or blossom matrix you can see and you put proper weightage and see whether which one is highly conserved which position is highly conserved so i'll explain the steps one by one okay first we go with the unweighted amino acid frequencies here we do not give any weightage in this case u means unweighted so frequency of residue a at the position i this given as number of sequences having the residue alanine at position number i normalized with the total number of aligned sequences so this i varies from 1 to 20 right this is equal to 1 to 20 for the 20 different amino acid residues so, if you see this alignment, what is the frequency of occurrence of this amino acid residues in position number 9? How many times t? 5, 6 times. 6 times t, 6 t's. 7, seven times. 7 times? t 7 times a? 1 time. 1 time g? 1 time. 1 time s? Yes. 1 time. One time. Right. If you have another position, for example, alanine 7 times and any of the other residues 1, 1, 1, so you will get a similar score or a different score? Similar score because here we do not use any way to any different amino acids. We give equal weightage to all amino acids. Even in this case, if it is instead of threonine 7, if it is valine 7 times, and so alanine 1, tryptophan 1, right? so then we will get the same score. But if you look into this alignment, sometimes if you have the three it it won't match with the hydrophobic residues. But even in this case, you will get the same score. That's because we don't give weightage to any amino acid residues. So here, if you have i, is the each residue i, right? Any residue for a in the any position i normalized with the total number of sequences at a particular position. Fine. So normally, if you use this for a specific group of sequences, which highly homologous, any specific group then we expect similar residues at similar positions. So, in this case we use unweighted amino acid frequencies for any specific group of sequences. So, the second one this is weighted amino acid frequencies. Here we give weightage. If we give weightage to any specific sequence or you weightage to any given residues right to give preference. Here we introduce this term right delta a k i. So, this is equal to 1 if a in the sequence k at position i, if you decide position right any any position i in the sequence k, amino acid a is in the sequence right and then you give the weightage for the particular sequence. Otherwise, this equal to 0, is, w k is the weightage of a sequence k right and delta a k i equal to 1, if the amino acid a is in the sequence k at position i, if it is not then you can put 0 otherwise. So, k equal to 1 to number of sequences. So, here why we need to do this weightage position concept also we give some preference to some specific amino acid residues. If 3 are in 6 times and 4 hydrophobic residues this different from 3 are in 6 times and 7 in 4 times. If you similar type of residues you can have more score. So, in this case we give weightage. Then also you can give the some sequences more weightage. For example, if you have several sequences right and some of them are highly related and some of them are distant related. If you want to include the distant related sequences, for example, divergent sequences, if you want to include this in the score, then you have to give weightage to the sequence. Otherwise, if 9 sequences are homologous and one is a distant related ones, so the score will be always high because based on the, the 9. So, if you want to include the preference of this divergent sequence, then we need to give a weight. So, in that case, you can include the information from this divergent sequences. Then the third one, we can also use this frequency based on dependent counts. How far you can get 
this counts in random distribution. So, independent counts they put i c the same the frequency of occurrence of any residue a at position number i which is given as number of residues of a at position number i normally the total number of residues at any position. So, if all the 20 residues are at the random distribution then you can see assume that f equal to 20 into 1 minus 0 0.95 into n if n equal to 1 what is the value? 1 minus 0.95 in this equal to 0 0.05 0 0.05 into 20 that is equal to 1 right. So, now you can see for us for you can assume that we can fit this function f in this, in this equation such a way that if it is totally random completely 5 percent. So, you can if you do this uh, equation you can get the 1 equal to 1 f equal to 1 is what expected that is fine. So, from this one you can calculate the effective of this n you have the actual values and you have the random values and you can fit with some function right in this case you can fit with this n as n effective. So, you see this equation then if you change this equation to get the n effective right. So, you move this 20 here that means f by 20 equal to 1 minus 0 0.95 into n power n in this case 1 minus f by 20 this equal to 0 0.95 power n then take the logarithm ln right ln then you can move this n here that is n into ln of 0 0.95 from this you can get this n effective right this equal to ln of 1 minus f by 20 divided by ln of 0 0.95. So, you can get this number right. So, for any f take amino acid a in position i in a single sequence this equal to 1 if you take that. Then if you have more sequences for example, 20 sequences if you have one more sequence there are two possibilities one possibility is that could be the same amino acid right. For example, if you have a sequence right a i t s t a right this is a concept here right. Then we add new sequence there are two possibilities one possibility is it could be a then this case n, n a i c a y is equal to 1 because it is identical even if you add more that is no difference because average is the same and second possibility is other than a whatever it is because if it is other than a it is not identical if it is not a then n i c f i equal to n a f i because it depends upon the amino acid. So, now the question is if you add one sequence what is the probability of this this function f right whether this will fit with this equation or not. So, in this case imagine the equation with two conditions one if n equal to 1 or n equal to n plus 1. If both the cases if you are able to fit in this equation then you can say that you can use this to get the independent counts. So, if, if, if n, n equal to 1 then it will fit with this equation n equal to 1 f equal to 1 that we discussed earlier. So, that is true then assume n equal to n where f of n i is a probability of i right different amino acids to occur the position. So, now you can see this for if n equal to n you will get this equation f of n i comma i that is equal to 20 into 1 minus 0 0.95 into n right that is fine because we assume that that is that is fine. Now, if n equal to n plus 1 okay, then you add one more sequence then there are two possibilities one is it is i by 20 adding the same one or we can take the i plus 1 with the probability of 20 minus i by 20 with the 20 possibilities not the same one. So, I got to subtract so 20 minus i divided by 20. 20 different possibilities. Then if you add this in this equation f equal to i into i by 20 right and i plus 1 into this 20 minus i by 20 in the function of n comma i. So, if you simplify this equation you will get this 1 plus 0 0.95 into i with the function of n comma i and this equal to 20 into 1 minus 0 0.95 into n plus 1 because we get derive these numbers and if this is equal to 0 point uh, this 1 if you divide by 20 right 0 0.05 then finally, if you take this out 20 out then you will get 20 into 1 minus 0 0.95 into n plus 1. So, if you look these two equations if n equal to n or n equal to 1 it, it obeys this equation 
and if it is n plus 1 the same instead of n we use n plus 1. So, in this if you prove this one then we can use this particular equation to see the, the actual and the random distribution and to get the independent counts.